All right, ladies and gentlemen, and Pavard and Alaba and Nick Lajula and everyone that was crapping our defense yesterday, welcome back to another video on Bayern Now, the ultimate Bayern Munich fan channel. Look, I'll be asking a very important question, but before all of you start bannering us and doing all these things, make sure you're not a Barca fan or a Chelsea fan or an Arsenal fan. I do not want to hear you talk any smoke about Bayern. Look, I give it smoke and I can take it, all right? I give it and I take it, all right? Look, I can give the smoke. But I do not want to hear Chelsea fans going, oh, 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 you lost my, you lost my, no, 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 no. Let me not smack you on the side of your head. Know your place, okay? Know your place. <laughs> That's like Kevin Hart walking up to Dwayne The Rock Johnson and calling The Rock short. Kevin, you're 5'4". The Rock is 6'5". You have no ground for what you believe in. Okay, cool, cool. <laughs> now here's a question that I want to ask everyone. What does David Alaba offer this Bayern team at the moment. Do, 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 do. Pause the video now, you can answer it and uh, leave a like on the video. <laughs> 10 seconds is over, ladies and gentlemen, you should all have your responses. Now, here's what I think. I think people will probably look upon last season and talk about, oh, he was breaking the lines with his passes and he was amazing. His ball recoveries were on top in the Bundesliga and he was one of the most exceptional defenders, center backs in Europe in terms of ball progression and ball recovery. You're going to say all these things and you're going to say without Alaba last season, we scored 15% less goals, which is all factual. But what about now? You cannot use the past to justify the future. You can't rob the bank today they get you in the court and you're like, Judge, I know I robbed a bank and killed the lady while I was at it, but look at all the good things I did in the past. Not going to cut it. <laughs> Not going to cut it. So, Alaba, right now, I'm prosecuting you based on this season. And think about it from this perspective. I'm paying money, money that I work hard for, to watch Alaba play crap, to watch Bayern play crap. And this video shouldn't be about Alaba. It's just one of the main issues that I keep seeing happen. Why does Flick keep playing this guy? Hansi just admitted that Alaba didn't play well yesterday. Well, Alaba didn't play that bad yesterday, but I think his leadership, you know, the blind cannot lead the blind. Alaba's a blind defender and he's leading our other blind defenders. His vision isn't there. He doesn't command his area and command that back line, which is what a leader is supposed to do. Watch Sergio Ramos. Watch Van Dyke and how he organizes his back line. He's pointing to people. People were laughing at Van Dyke when he was defending against Messi. Messi, the greatest player of all time, the GOAT. Defending against Messi and he was pointing where Robertson should be and where Henderson should have, should have went. Ladies and gentlemen, that's not a sign of weakness, that's a sign of leadership. Van Dijk is pointing to them where they should go, and he defended well in that instance. When do you see Alaba pointing where Davies should go and Niklas should go? But Hansi apparently made Alaba his defensive chief. I don't know what chief you're talking about. A chief from an African tribe? Is that what you mean? I don't get it. He's not a chief in our defense. He might be a chef, maybe that's what Hansi meant. He might be cooking it up in the kitchen, but he's not cooking it up on that pitch. <laughs> he maybe wanted to say Alaba was our defensive chef, <laughs> not our defensive chief. Because the only thing he's adding to Niklas Jula's game is the burgers Niklas eats after the games. Seriously, he's not really improving with Alaba. Alaba makes everyone else shaky, in my opinion. Every time we have defended without Alaba and without him in the back line, whether it's him in midfield or not on the pitch at all, we play better. We play better. There was a game where Alaba came back from injury and he got back into the starting 11 right away. Hansi, he must have your nudes. He must have Hansi Flick's nudes. Now that I'm done talking about Alaba, Niklas Jula, you were atrocious, atrocious yesterday. The errors we made were uncalled for. We shouldn't have made them. Pavard, you're crap. Benjamin Herbert from Family Guy, you're old, you're slow, very lethargic, dull player. I don't know what people see in him or what you saw in him last season. I didn't see it. A lot of people didn't see it. How is he just going to magically gain all this ability that he clearly can't have? Pavard does not possess the ability to do and have technical ability. It doesn't exist in him. He's a functional player that works hard. He's an oxygen breather that portrays his real mentality on the pitch by running around and working hard. But working hard doesn't cut it sometimes. Sometimes you can work hard, but nothing pulls off and you have to have talent. Hard work without talent is pretty much just 
just nothing. <laughs> You're just working at that point. But when you have talent to show for your hard work, you can understand. Look at Kimmich, for example. Kimmich works as hard as Povard, if not more. But he also has the talent. So they work together. Goretzka has the talent and the hard work. Muller has the talent and the hard work. Lewandowski has the talent and the hard work. Some of our players, Davies has the talent and the hard work. Neuer has the talent and the hard work. Some of our players are either missing talent or hard work. If they had both, we would be square. We would never even need to sell any player or need to get a new player in their position. We wouldn't have players that are going out of form for months at a time. It wouldn't happen. But because Pavard doesn't have any talent, well, he has talent more than the average person, let's say. But his talent is not world-class level, which is the level I want every Bayern player to be. Because we are a world-class team. We cannot have more than three players that aren't world-class. In my opinion, our entire team should have one world-class player in each position. We have world-class wingers. We have world-class strikers, midfielders, a world-class goalkeeper, world-class defenders. That's my opinion. I think that's what we require to play the best and to entertain the fans. Over the last three months... I don't know the single game where I can point to and say, that's the game I thought we played perfectly in. Well, I can say Atletico, you know, but I mean just complete performance where we dominated the game. I don't know if it's the tiredness of the season, but it's just like we're making the same mistakes with the same players making those mistakes. Clearly, it has to do with the fact that we keep persisting with the same bummy players that made the mistakes the other week. If we want to defend better, why don't we just drop Alaba? Here's how you solve the problem. Drop the guy. And people saying, drop Zula and play Boateng, you're acting like Boateng wasn't taken off at halftime for being atrocious against whatever team we played a few weeks ago. You're acting like Boateng is much better than the alternative. Nikla Jula, Lucas Hernandez, Davies, and whoever we can play at right back. That's our back line. I do not want to see Alaba next. But guess what? We probably will. Hansi already admitted Alaba didn't play well. And he admitted a mistake Alaba made. But what happened in all the previous games where he was constantly getting defended? Alaba's leaving us. That's the most annoying and most pissing me off part. He's leaving us in five months, yet we're playing him and consistently giving him game time despite him not committing to us. It's weird. So, I mean, that was the lineup yesterday. I'm so irritated because Dortmund won today. And I kind of wanted a title race to put us under pressure and Leipzig went and lost. I want a title race that makes sense. I do not want a boring race. I want something interesting that pushes us. People don't realize this, but if we have a Leipzig pushing us and constantly getting us over the edge, we will be empowered to play better. That's how it works. When we're just complacent because we're 10 points clear in, in April, I don't imagine we have much motivation to play at a standard. So that's why I want Leipzig to actually go ahead of us and, and look like they could win it. So it makes the league more fun while also pushing us and propelling us to new heights. But they didn't do that today, so that's a little bit annoying. And uh, we're getting away with it. We got away with so many performances. This was coming, by the way. We went 2-0 up, and the complacency just hit. Go after go after go. And each goal was the exact same type of error, which tells me, look, why are we playing Pavard? He's crap. You might not want to hear it, but he's not playing well. Why are we playing him? I don't know why. What, what justification did he get to earn his spot in the team? Chris Richards got like two assists, almost three assists, versus Herder Berlin. Anyone remember that? He got a little bit of an injury, but... Where is he in the first team? Bonasa, who we wasted money on. I would terminate that, that guy's contract. He is annoying me every time I look at him. Because he just reminds me of the reason we didn't go for Akraf Hakimi, Serginho Dest. These are two fullbacks that would solve so many of our problems. People wanted to talk to me about how Hakimi couldn't defend. Or Dest couldn't defend. Can any of our fullbacks defend right now? At least Dest and Hakimi were young. And they actually only needed to be coached and drilled into positioning. It wasn't anything to do with their natural defensive ability. Both of those players could defend in 1v1s, but they just needed to train their ability to be positionally sound over time, but no one wanted to listen. I feel like fans don't listen to each other. 
I was crying about Pavard back in April and people were laughing at me. And now you're seeing what I was seeing, except now you're seeing it in a bigger light. I want Pavard to get back into form, but I know for sure he's not a world-class right back. We can do better. I told people, don't buy Bonasa, buy Dest. And people were like, well, we just need depth. We just need players. We just need to fill the gaps. Sometimes you can fill the gaps with, you know, it's like taking a sponge and trying to stop water from going through to somewhere. No, you need a wall. You need someone permanent, someone that's going to come in and solidify a position. I wanted us to sign Dest because I genuinely thought that player would have been better than the players we had. Or at least he would have given us a different solution. But we signed a 20 year, 28 year old guy who only gets injured, which tells me we didn't even really scout him because this guy's injury prone. He doesn't have much ability. We need a, a new right back. He's not even that fast. His ball control, his positioning defensively is all poor, which kind of goes against the argument that Dest and Hakimi weren't, weren't positionally sound. So guess what? We still have crapness. Douglas Costa, nothing against him. It's not his fault. The guy's winning off the pitch. He has a 10 out of 10, <laughs> 10 out of 10 female. He doesn't need to be all focused. He's only on, on loan here. But again, that goes to show our incompetency sometimes in the transfer window. Was he our first choice? No, we wanted to sign someone else. We wanted to sign, um, what's his name? Callum Hudson, whatever. We wanted to get him. We didn't even have other alternatives. We had to go to these panic signings. I hope that they work. Chupa Moting, what, why did we buy him while also simultaneously keeping Xerxy, despite Xerxy playing at the same level as him? Don't know why. We have so many annoying issues where if we could only just play the right players, play Lucas Hernandez, play Zula consistently. If Zula makes 10 mistakes in the game, I want to see him start the next game the same way Alaba starts the next games. Except Zula has potential. He has ability. Whereas Alaba is playing with a contract in mind because he knows he's not going to be here. Why are you playing someone that's not committed to you? If you're in a relationship and your partner is not committed to you, they're off cheating and negotiating with Real Madrid, <laughs> you'd probably want to break up with them and just stop it before it gets more toxic to the point where you get so emotionally invested that you actually end up feeling hurt and personally hurt. So yeah, I'm out, man. Mia, Samia, and peace.